I would say Reagan Youth and Bad Brains. And, and that, that sticks out in my mind because it, it was life changing. Kate Schellenbach from the Beastie Boys, the original lineup, um, would, would probably be the Killer Instinct girls too, because it was just right there in front of you. You know, they could, they're doing it. You can do it too, you know? Um, and I guess the Beastie Girls, uh, purely for their fashion sense, <laughs> they, they were the fashion plates that everybody copied. Um, and uh, Jill is, they, they became Luscious Jackson and became very popular. So they were really cool, smart girls. It's always has been hard to be taken seriously, you know, even though it was less so in the beginning, still, you, you know, you, if you weren't anybody's girlfriend or, you know, you didn't have any, you know, protectors, it, it was, but also I, I must say that back then in the scene, the guys protected the girls. They did because we, we were all in it together and we were there, there girl, even though we had nothing sexual or romantic to do with these guys, you were our sister, you know, we will protect you. Just like if something would happen to the guys, the girls had enough balls to jump in and do, you know, their deal, you know, and when we would jump off from, from the stage back in the day, I only did it like twice because that was enough. Um, the guys would actually catch you and help you and we would break the fall of other guys. It wasn't so violent. Like that, that idiotic violence w was not in there, which for me was a turd in the punch bowl. It just ruined everything. And a lot of people stopped hanging out precisely because of the violence and idiocy uh, of all of that. Our people who we protected one another against were the drug dealers, you know, and, and the Lower East Side um, gangs, I would say that, and that's why people wore chains and certain things just to protect themselves. Uh, again, I have to stress Avenue A was a war zone in 1980, 81, 82, even 83. And, and people seem to forget it wasn't as gentrified. There was no NYU kids, there were no bros, I mean, it was a different world. CB's A7. Danceteria, because I, I saw a lot of cool shows there. I saw Grandmaster Flash there, Furious Five. Mm -hmm. Hey man, can't say no to that, you know? Um, yeah, so I, I, I would say A7, CB's, Danceteria. And I would say Old Peppermint Lounge, because I've seen a lot of cool shit there. The old one, not, not the one on Fifth Avenue, but the one on, in 40-something, Midtown. Four. There were just so many. Uh, the first one, Bad Brains and Reagan Youth, has to be one of the shows because, it, like I said, it was life-changing. After that, my whole paradigm went whoop, and I saw a world in, in a new light and the possibilities. And when Bad Brains played, and when I saw them for the first time, it was literally like hearing new music or, or you know, hearing Mozart, or I could imagine what was like hearing Mozart back day. It, uh, completely opening the mind to the possibilities of what could be. I must say other shows, uh, one of the first shows of, uh, of Chromax that Chromax ever, ever done with Mackie on drums, um, Kevin, I mean, I mean Paris, um, well, Kevin Paris, uh, on guitar, Harley on bass, and John on vocals, because, you know, John was not the original singer, but I think seeing that lineup at CB's for the first time, also mind-blowing. Um, my God, there were just so many shows. Void at, at Gildersleeves. Oh my God, they were staying at my friend's house and we actually tortured them prior to the show, those guys. They were such great sports. They were, they, they were an amazing, amazing band. So Void, Gildersleeves was another mind blowing. Any Minor Thread show, I would say also, um, Minor Thread in DC was 
an amazing show. I forget who played with them, but, but a whole bunch of us went by car to, to see them, and I had to hitchhike back. That was an experience. Um, and uh, I would say Minor Threat at Irving Plaza, also in the early 80s. That, that was incredible. Hell no. I never, I visited, you know, squats and, you know, but look, I was a kid from Queens, you know, um, I never, I was never a street kid. I was never a runaway. I had amazing parents with an amazing support network. They allowed me to do that. Uh, yes, they weren't happy. They're like, oh, what are you doing? You're looking like shit. Oi, vey, look at you. You know, you look like a lesbian. What is this with the hair? Oi! You know, my mom let rest her soul but you know they lived with it they you know they never went to see my shows but dad later on in the 90s went to see my band shiny mama and and that was awesome oh my god um i think i m missed quite a few but i can't even say because i think you know I think I saw all the bands I wanted to see, maybe not in certain venues that they, you know, they played, but I, I can't say that I missed many. I think I saw all the bands that I really wanted to see. So I, that doesn't, it, it's not like, oh, you know, I, I missed. Because I, I think at least once I've seen every band that I really, really loved. Oh my lord. Well, I mean, come on, John Watson. And uh Bobby. I mean, that's I mean, Jesse, uh, you know, James Drescher, of course, but you know, th those are I guess my top. Queens. Ah. Uh -huh. Um Heaven and Hell. I would say would be my number one, the opus that is. Um, then Holy Diver, Rainbow in the Dark, Neon Nights. Well, why, why don't I just like tell you the whole set that I love to do? But yeah, I guess that would be. I, I loved Rainbow also. That that peer, Kill the King. What a killer song. And what about Gates of Babylon? That beginning dun 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 with the bass. Ah, oh, fantastic. I don't know. I'm, I'm I'm a you know punk rock hardcore, but I love me some Dio. Mm -mm.